testosterone, or T, as we fondly call it, has quite a few different ways it can be delivered. The first type, and probably most common, are injections. There are two major types of testosterone, cypionate and enanthate. I will put a link to a blog post talking about the difference between cypionate and enanthate. There's really not much of a difference. Cypionate is more common in the U.S., but they're really neck and neck as far as what they do for you. They're just very close to each other. So I'll put a link to that. You can read more if you want. But injections every week or every two weeks, the most common dose is 200 milligrams every two weeks or 100 milligrams a week. But your dose can be anything. It can be 25 milligrams a week. It could be 50 every two. My dose personally is 120 milligrams a week. I have a very fast metabolism, and I just go through tea really fast. Some people take... 200 milligrams every two weeks. It really just depends on you and what your body needs. So testosterone, cypionate, and enanthate injections are commonly given in the thigh, the buttocks, you know, like the glute, sometimes the arm, and they're given weekly or bi-weekly, sometimes every 10 days. I once was on a 10-day schedule, then an 11-day schedule. That was really hard to keep track of. Nibido is a type of testosterone injection that is done about four times a year. I don't think it's available in the U.S. yet. I'm pretty sure it's not. You only have to take it about four times a year. You have to get four injections at once, but it reduces the amount of shots. You know, taking a shot every week sucks. You build up scar tissue. You know, it's no fun to have to poke yourself every week. I know a lot of guys in Europe are on it and love it. You just get four shots of testosterone, and then it lasts three to four months. I hope that's available in the U.S. soon. That would be awesome. So injections seem to be the most common, uh, but I start out on cream, actually, so... That is kind number two. So the second kind is transdermal, meaning patches, creams, gels, anything that's absorbed through the skin. I started tea when I started on November 30th, 2005, on cream. I got it from a compounding pharmacy because it's cheaper. You can look at local pharmacies. There's a lot of other popular pharmacies with trans people. You can really get it at any compounding pharmacy. Just your doctor has to tell the pharmacist what concentration, what you want. I started out on a compounded cream because honestly I was afraid of needles. I didn't want to inject myself. I just wasn't into it. Now it's not a problem. Just, you know, whatever. The cream is nice. You get kind of a little zing every day, but it's really a pain to have to put it on. You know, and you have that chance that you could transfer it to a female partner. They don't want that, obviously. So I started out with the cream. I was very happy with the changes. A lot of people think cream doesn't work as fast as shots. I would argue with that. I had another friend, a trans guy, start tea on the same day as me, but with injections, I started with cream. We were just neck and neck with our changes. Um, the only thing that didn't happen for me was my voice didn't drop as fast as I wanted to. So in the fourth month, I was also just tired of putting on cream every day. In the fourth month, I switched to injections and my voice dropped like right away. But that's me personally. Some people have great results on cream. Some people do their entire transitions on cream. Some people start on injections, then go to cream later for maintenance. So they'll do the injections during their puberty, during their major, you know, changes. And then, you know, later on, just to maintain their T levels, they'll do cream. I, I like the cream, but it uh, it's definitely, I always forget to put it on or I have to sit around for a while and let it dry. And then you can't touch your partner for a while. So, you know, that kind of can get kind of to be a pain in the butt to navigate. But um, some people like patches. I've never used a patch, but you know, they, they stick to you like a nicotine patch or something. Some people don't like them because they rub off with the sweat or they irritate the skin. They're also name brand creams and gels, like Androgel is a popular gel. Um, Testum is another one. So those are good alternatives if you don't like shot. Testum and Androgel are really expensive, like $200 a month if you don't have insurance. And most insurances will not cover testosterone. Unless, you know, you're listed as male. But I had the problem of being listed as female when I had insurance back when I lived in Florida. I think the cream is a great option. Strohecker's Pharmacy, Women's International Pharmacy in Arizona and Wisconsin are great for trans people. Um, I just went to a local one in Jacksonville as well. Oh, there's a cat. <laughs> but a lot of places will do that. So you can get cream in lots of places. It's a really good supplement. I really like the cream. It just didn't put my voice where I wanted to. And I just, I like the injections. Even though you get kind of like the ups and downs, they're just a little bit easier for me personally to remember to put on. Some people are really good with their teens and putting creams and lotions and doing all this stuff. I'm not one of them. So it's definitely a viable, good alternative. I would not knock the cream. And I would say it's definitely can compete with the injections as far as, you know, your transition goes. <laughs> The third type of testosterone delivery method is sublingual. 
That means oral, um, like taken by tablets. It is not a very common delivery method, at least in the U.S. Tablets and other oral um, delivery methods of testosterone tend to cause some problems on the liver. Testosterone already affects the liver, so that just kind of adds to the risk. The fourth type is surgical implants. These are quite expensive unless you can get it covered by insurance. We're talking over $1,000. I don't have any personal experience with the surgical implants, so I'm very interested in them once I can get um, some good insurance. But I do have some friends that have tried it and they really love it. It's a minor outpatient procedure. You just check into the hospital. Basically, the doctor makes a minor incision and, and injects testosterone pellets. And then, like the Nubito, it's you know more of a time release, reduces the amount of injections you have to take. It just seems a lot easier than having to do a shot every week or two. I hope you enjoyed this video. I try not to go into too much detail, especially with things I don't have experience with, but I encourage people to make video responses with their own experience. I will put them on my blog. The comments I get on my videos sometimes create just this wealth of information, so that's kind of cool. Sometimes it's not so much the video itself as all the comments it generates that are really helpful. So take care, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a good weekend. All right, peace.